Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Pemidaka and I am Subhash Chandra. In this video, I would like to talk about piping layout which I have not covered in my channel so far. And moreover, one of my viewers has been continuously following me to talk about piping layout in my channel. So, I wish that this video would help him to, uh, to meet his expectation. So, let's talk about piping layout. When we uh, term piping layout, what comes in our mind is piping layout is a more technical document. It needs a lot of uh, skills to prepare. It needs a lot of uh, learnings through experience. Basically, we consider piping layout as a most sophisticated design. Because when you look at the piping layout, you can find n number of details which actually gives you a brainstorming effort actually. So, but indeed piping layout is. So, I will speak about that one by one. So, first of all, let's try to understand what is piping layout is about. Let me tell you from my experience and uh, from the process point, uh, process plan design point of view. Piping layout is the most detailed drawing that shows almost all the physical object in the above ground facilities. So, which means that uh, it will not cover the underground facilities. It will show some trace of underground, but it will not essentially show the underground facilities. Provided it will show almost all above ground facilities in the drawing. So, that is one of the reasons why piping layout is always considered as one of the most important document. Because if you have all your physical objects in the drawing, you don't have to go to site to check the condition of the site. You just have to verify the drawing. If you want to understand, if you want to put some new equipments or piping in that particular location. Let's take an example. You want to put a pump or you want to put any equipment or you want to lay any piping. So what happens that if you don't have piping layout, if you don't have piping layout, you will not be able to know whether you have a space or not. You will not be able to know whether you have any cable tray running or not. You will not be able to know whether you have any junction box over there or any supports over there. But if you have the piping drawings, I mean piping layout available in your hand, you can know, you can study the site. You can study, study the exact site condition without even going to the site. So that is one of the most important facilities that is, uh, that uh, I mean uh, benefits that you get from piping layout. And moreover, piping layout is not only meant for piping. Essentially, piping layout is meant for piping, but the elements that are shown in piping layout is more than piping. Say for an example, we show the above ground uh, cable trays, above ground junction box and safety showers. We show almost all the facilities, I mean all the physical objects that are in above ground. So the intent is to uh, understand the space available without even going to the site. So that is where the intent actually comes from. I hope this uh, briefing is much more uh, clear to understand what is piping layout is about. Now let's talk about what are we exactly doing in piping layout. So essentially we are uh, focusing on several factors. So the first important factor that we are focusing is the space. So space in the sense how to plan the existing space. You have a plot. Imagine you have a plot and you wanted to put some equipment, piping, supports and everything. So these things has to be properly arranged. Otherwise you will be go on occupying almost all the areas and finally end up messing up the whole thing. But if you plan things, you will be able to reserve some space for the future. And also you can use uh, the uh, your uh, requirements within the very uh, short space. Space is the one part of assessment. And what is the second part of assessment? The second part of assessment is to produce a design that facilitates the process design. Essentially what we are doing is that we are developing piping in order to meet some process requirements. So we are finalizing the pipe routings, we are finalizing the loops, downward loops, vent, drains and valve locations and everything we are finalizing in order to facilitate the process requirements. So basically process requirements are based on some concepts, right? So process, they prepare PFS, I mean, they prepare the PNID and process concepts based on some requirements, requirements of the productivity. 
So to meet that productivity, we prepare a design. So the first thing is your space and second element uh, is to meet the design uh, to facilitate the process. And the third important is the safety. Basically, when you work, when someone is working in a plant, uh, they should have some safety around them. Not only just for the working, uh, like those who are uh, considered to be an operators and uh, regular workers and uh, field, they should not face any uh, hazardous moment in the plant. So your design actually uh, improve the safety factors in the design. So we also concern about the safety of uh, the individuals and the personnel and operators working in the plant. And the fourth important area is the accessibility. Essentially, we need to have an access for instruments, valves, and to do, in order to do any construction activity, we need to have a space and we need to have an access, right? So all these things are the very important part of design. So let me tell you space and uh, uh, to uh, ease the process design and then to facilitate the, the safety and then for your accessibility. So these are the four important areas that we have to so when, when I talk about accessibility, again, maintenance, access and everything that comes in actually, operability, everything that comes in. So these are the four important areas we are essentially focused on design in order to get two more benefits. So what are the two more benefits? Two more benefits is planning the material and time. Let me tell you how it is actually. Say for an example, you are routing a line and you have finalized your routing. So based on your final design, you will prepare the material list and you will procure this material and you have this material reserved for this particular design. And take a second case where you haven't finalized your design and you just have made some conceptual routing and you uh, uh, like uh, you are thinking to uh, make the field routing. So based on field condition. So imagine that when you are actually uh, routing the line uh, in field, uh, you uh, happen to understand that instead of uh, three elbows, you only ordered two elbows actually. So what do you do for one more elbow? Say from, I guess uh, you're getting my point, right? So you are making a field routing and suddenly you realize that you need to have a three elbows. But the material that you have ordered is only two elbows. So the difference between the finalized design and the field routing is this is what the difference is actually. When you have finalized your design, you can list out the material, exact material that is required for construction. But when you have not finalized your design, you cannot list out the exact material. So what is the problem? So finally the concern is that, okay, if I miss out some material, I, can, I just need to buy it, right? So that is the question is about it. No, it is about the time, how long it will take to uh, arrange the material which are missed out from your list. Say for an example, you want to buy some 10 inch elbow. Do you think you can buy in a day or do you think you can buy in an hour? No, it's not possible because there are some procurement process, inspection process, qualification process, material receivable, and uh, the transmittal process. So these things, documentation work. So these things will take huge, uh, I mean, it, it takes huge time. So uh, roughly we can say to procure one elbow, minimum you need two to three weeks because even if you uh, speed up your working process, it needs that much of time to procure this material. So we are essentially planning the material and as well as the indirect effect goes to the time. You are also saving the time. Because what happens at the end of the moment, you want some additional material and you go and procure them. Again, you're going to delay the entire project, right? So you will have the manpower uh, ready. So they will be in idle conditions just because of one material, the entire crew will be uh, in idle conditions. So uh, once again, if you keep the uh, manpower and resources in idle condition, you have to pay them because these are all supply materials. We cannot simply say that we cannot pay them, right? So these are the impacts of design actually. So not only time in terms of material, in terms of construction planning, if you have the drawings, I mean, if you have the uh, finalized design, actually, you will be able to channelize the construction work, which work to start first and which work to end first. And you can allot a crew for the maximum number of work and you can allot a less crew for the minimum number of work. So entire uh, the construction planning can be done only if you have the drawings in place. So to, in order to facilitate uh, this particular uh, requirements, we need to have the piping layer because only in piping design, you will be able to design the factors such as space and process design and safety and accessibility. So I hope that this uh, briefing is, uh, has helped you to understand what is piping layer is about.
So you don't have to think that piping layout is a too complicated item. Piping layout is more of a common sense. And more importantly, different companies have their own standards. Different companies have, the, have their own specifications actually. So when you are actually uh, before start uh, preparing the piping layout, I kindly recommend you to go through the specifications of your particular client. Go through because uh, the clients will have different clients will have different uh, specifications and requirements actually. It is uh, very uh, important to go through these uh, specifications one by one because these are not uh, one line or two line or one page or two pages. It will be of hundred pages. They will uh, what do you call have addressed uh, uh, different uh, dimensions of requirement. So essentially, you have to go through all these things so and make sure that you comply with this. These are technical requirements which may comply with the local standard and national standard. So that is why these specification varies. So piping layout is more of about the more detailed drawing of the entire space which will show all, almost all the physical objects are in the above ground facility and you have to comply with the requirements of your respective client and go through the specification before start preparing the piping layout. In uh, another videos and I will try to post um, a lot of uh, uh, videos about the piping layout to understand different areas of piping layout. And if you have any comments about whatever that I have said so far, you can comment and I will be able to uh, clarify you through you by replying you actually. So I believe this video has helped you to understand at least a bit about piping layout. I will post more videos in the coming days. So I will meet you in another fantastic video. Until then bye from Subhash Chandra.